Welcome to Angels in the Glen. The Revelation 13 study is about the mark of the beast as found in Revelation 13. We're going to study five things about the mark of the beast so that when you understand all of these five items that we're going to cover in this study, you're not going to be surprised. You'll know what the mark is. You'll know how these events are unfolding. You're not even going to be fearful. You'll be armed with biblical truth that will root and ground you in the eternal gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's cover those five things that we're going to cover in this study. Number one, what is the mark of the beast? We will identify from the Bible what the mark of the beast is. I mean, using your own Bible, you will be able to compare scripture with scripture and identify the mark of the beast. I will say this though, it is not a literal 666 written on your right hand or your forehead. That is the wrong interpretation. That's a literal interpretation. It's a spiritual application and we'll show you why it's a spiritual application. Profound significance in this understanding of what it is. Not only what it is, number two, the significance of the mark. It's why is it that? Why is it the 666 in terms of the spiritual application? Because it's one thing to know what it is, but why is it what it is? And that's what we're going to see. We're going to explain to you how it is an attack on the eternal gospel of Jesus Christ. If you've never heard of this before, we want you to join us in this study. Topic number three we're going to cover. The mark is a contrast to the name of God. Right? The mark of the beast is a contrast to the name of God. Look at the last couple scripture verses in Revelation 13. It says, And he provides that no one will be able to buy or sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name then here is wisdom, it's 666. Now look at the next scripture verse in Revelation 14 verse 1. Then I heard and looked and behold, a lamb was standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000, having his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. Right, you see, there's a contrast between the mark and number and name of the beast and the name of God that's written on the foreheads. Right, there's only going to be two people at the end of time, those that take the mark, and those that refuse the mark and take the name of God on their foreheads. Because it's one and the same with the seal of God. The name of God is the same as the seal of God. Look at Revelation 7 verses 2 and 3. This is the very end of the world. It says, And I saw another angel ascending from the rising of the sun, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we have sealed the bondservants of our God on their foreheads. Now that's the name of God. Right now, I can tell you, people are being sealed with the name of God, with the seal of God as we speak. They're coming out of Babylon, spiritual Babylon, out of confusion, and they're taking the name of the God on their foreheads because God is preparing his church to be ready for his soon return. Next question we're going to cover, topic number four. Who will implement the mark of the beast? Who is it that's going to force people to take this mark so that they can't buy or sell? Take a look on the screen. There are three entities or people, if you will, that are going to do this. You have the great red dragon. Then you have a harlot sitting on a beast. That's the sea beast. And we have the false prophet. That's the earth beast. Now, we're going to unpack all of this, but I just want to explain this right now. We have the Trinity. We have the Godhead. You have God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This false trinity is going to emerge. The dragon is going to try to represent himself as the father. The sea beast is going to try to represent himself as Christ. That's the Antichrist. And the earth beast is going to try to represent himself as the Holy Spirit. But it's a false Holy Spirit. All right? And we'll see a false Holy Spirit moving across the entire globe with, and they go out to deceive the nations. We'll explain all that in this study. Topic number five. Why is this important? What's the significance of all this? Why should I study this out? Well, God wants his people ready. We're coming to a point in time when the mark is going to be put in place across the entire earth. Now, I will say this. It's not going to be a negative thing. It's going to be a positive thing. It's going to be something that's good for families, good for society, good for uh, workers, good for everyone. And it's it's going to be crafted and packaged and messaged that it's a good thing. The only problem with it, it is a deception, all right? That's why it's significant. And it'll sound good even in the churches. Many churches will say, that's a good idea. But what it is, is it's going against the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's an attack on the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why it's significant. God wants his people ready and armed with the truth so that they can 
they can, they can push aside all deceptions and let the light of God's truth hit their hearts and they can continue to walk in obedience. Now, you can watch this complete lesson on the link below. Go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org. We've got study guides for you and we're going to take you through all of that we just covered. It's not just one study, it's a series of studies because God wants his people ready to understand the events that must take place before Jesus Christ returns. It's about the first angel's message, the second angel's message, and the third angel's message, which culminate in the mark of the beast. Now, it's not a time to fear. It is not a time to fear, it's a time to be ready. God wants his people ready for the soon return of Jesus Christ. I hope you'll join us.